Hi there, and welcome to the Grief and Rebirth podcast. I'm your host, author and trauma survivor, Irene Weinberg, here to encourage you wherever you are in your healing journey. In each episode, I chat with incredible grief and trauma specialists, healers, mediums, and celebs, as well as remarkable people who have inspiring healing stories to share. If you're looking for a podcast that's both uplifting and inspiring, you've found it. Let us help you find your joy in life. Hi, everyone. I hope this finds each of you so very well. I'm speaking to you from my studio in West Orange, New Jersey, and I could not be more delighted to have the pleasure of interviewing Philip Montrose, a highly regarded spiritual healer, coach, and trainer who is known for his transformative work empowering individuals to unlock their full potential and achieve profound healing on all levels physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. Philip's formal education included studies in both psychology and holistic health, and he earned degrees in both fields. However, it was his personal experiences and encounters with profound spiritual teachings that truly shaped his path. Guided by a deep sense of purpose, Philip dedicated himself to mastering ancient wisdom teachings, energy healing practices, and transformative coaching methodologies. And throughout his career, Philip has been unwavering in his commitment to helping others break free from limiting beliefs, heal past traumas, and align with their true essence. Drawing from a rich tapestry of teachings and experiences, he has developed a unique approach to healing and coaching that integrates the wisdom of Western and Eastern philosophies, energy medicine, and modern psychology. Philip and his wife, Jane, are the authors of three books, and their latest, titled The Loving Power of Your Soul, a guidebook for realizing your true potential, addresses profound questions such as, who are you and why are you here? How can you reliably access your inner truth and wisdom to guide you on your journey? And how can we clear roadblocks and move forward on our soul's journey with greater ease? I'm looking forward to talking with Philip who will be speaking to us today from Santa Maria, California, about the personal experiences and encounters with profound spiritual teachings that shaped his path, his inspiration to create, along with his wife Jane, the nonprofit Awakenings Institute, their most recent book titled The Loving Power of Your Soul, Philip's guidance for identifying and living one's soul calling, this amazing time we are experiencing when more and more light workers and spiritual healers are awakening, and more for what is surely going to be a fascinating interview filled with many enlightened healing insights. Hi, Philip. A hey. warm welcome <laughs> to Grief and Rebirth Podcast. Great to be with you, Irene. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. So let's get everyone to start to know you from the beginning. Sure. So let's talk about your developmental years. Growing up in an environment, and very few people get this privilege to me, growing up in an environment where alternative healing modalities were embraced. I mean, most today in the 3D world, people don't want to know about that. You must have gotten a couple of 5D parents or something where alternative healing modalities were embraced and share how you developed a keen interest in the interconnectedness of mind, body, and spirit. Yes. Yeah, so let me kind of put things in perspective here, Irene. Uh, well, it seems just in general people, some people early on, maybe even as a child or by their early adulthood just say hey something you know there's there's more going on than meets the eye you know and then many people uh maybe more from what i kind of gather takes a while 20s 30s 40s 50s and saying wait a second in the same realization this doesn't make sense there's much more going on spiritually beneath the surface where spiritual beings having human experiences has been said for me um i had an intuitive sense that there was much more than meets the eye, just with some difficulties in junior high and high school, feeling alienated, just feeling like, why are people so artificially separated and tribalistic? I know there are uh, reasons for humanity and survival for it, but it, it, on a deeper sense, I just felt like this spiritual 
something was spiritually missing. I certainly wasn't mature enough to put it in those terms. But you were sensitive enough to perceive it. So maybe you're, you know, what they call a high sensitive or whatever, because other kids, I don't think would be yeah, processing probably most it that kids, way. Yeah, I went to a pretty conventional middle class uh, neighborhood in, in Buffalo, New York, and it was pretty conventional and that didn't make sense to me either because what was conventional didn't make it was like not really good in my opinion it was right. just very separatist and judgmental and and kind of petty but that put me in my own reactionary sort of sarcastic way of dealing with it and I became very sarcastic in some ways pessimistic and in terms of aw awakening by the time I was in my 20s, I was thinking of maybe uh, becoming a film director or writer. I was at UCLA Film School and I did a film that I, my first film was pretty well received and the second one I did and it was actually very poorly received that you, you're there in front of all your classmates and I realized it really was a bad film. It's kind of like seeing sort of your shadow or something negative about you that you had never quite seen. But it's not only seeing it yourself, but it's seeing it and seeing that everyone else is seeing it at the same time. So it's very magnified, you know. It's like saying, I'm going to do a great dive, you know, in the pool in front of everyone, you know, I know and around and then it's a belly flop, you know. That must have been it's really a, hard for you. It was. It sent How me did you process a, that? I mean, like, Not you know. well at first, even though I was about 21 years old, I was very depressed. It was like my most depressed period. I can still remember where I just felt like I was a fraud. I felt like nothing made sense. I felt like all my energy was drained and it took a while. But this sent, because of the dark night of the soul idea, this sent me into searching and I started searching. Now we're talking about the 1970s. There's not nearly as many things available way before the internet. Uh, but I did everything I could, alternate psychology. I went to Naropa Institute for studying Buddhism in Colorado there was uh, Chungpa Rinpoche there and Ramdas and so forth. And I did Japanese tea ceremonies. And I finally came across a, a, a spiritual organization. I said, I guess I have to be with a group. Not that I was wanted to be with a group because I could only get so far on my own. And it was uh, a fourth way school, Gurdjieff Spensky. He was a Armenian sage. And we jo I joined the group where I met my wife, Jane Montrose, and we were there. And we learned a lot about esotericism and spirituality, but there were some shortcomings in it too that was part of our awakening. And that after I left that group, then I went further into healing because I realized healing what was, was what was missing from this group in, in your healing your shadow. So if you want to grow spiritually, you not only have to activate your, your gifts and your talents and help other people with it, which is enjoyable. Uh, but you need to clear the part that was awesome. belly flop uh, in front of all the film students, the, the parts that are, <laughs> uh, uh, that are, you're carrying with you that are fearful. And, uh, well, that, but I would submit to you that you're pretty atypical because someone else would be going to uh, turning to alcohol or, you know, really, you know, getting into all different kinds of things to com self comfort mm -hmm. and, and, and all of that. And they or or go into their local therapist and you got so involved with I mean, something led you into all these alternative healing modalities, which is very right. unusual. Yeah, the spiritual I realized that I luckily I bypassed the addictions and, and the self-destruction part. I just turned it into a spiritual search, which to me, when we're going to talk about the soul later on in this interview, your soul must have been calling for this uh, to guide mm -hmm. you into this for mm -hmm. what you needed to do in my opinion you know yeah, and yeah. This... I, th I think that's what I've been here to sent to do just from my own channelings and my own meditations just to bring the more spiritual into the the earthly realm yeah in a and practical way right this dark night of the soul that you were saying did that also didn't that also lead to the creation of this new life for you and you began with your wife, this Awakenings Institute. Am I have I got that right? right? Yeah, that's right. So we have different spiritual nights, dark nights of the soul, and those are what we call the spiritual activations, the way we understand it in developmental, how you grow spiritually. And you grow spiritually actually by healing those wounds, uh, depending where you are spiritually. At first, it's just saying, hey, I'm not part of the group. I'm not part of my tribe. I'm not my race. Uh, I'm not my family. I mean, that's part of me, but that's not really who I am at a deeper level. And you awaken to that and you say, you know, what else is out there? 
like I did when I was looking for the spiritual group. And you, after that, though, the next stage is another dark night of the soul is there's something wrong with me and you have to start healing the inner wound and child and can be past life things too. And there's deeper levels. And so going back to our story and answering your, your question, uh, we uh, started looking, Jane and I was married with her and living in Sacramento. And she was an architect at the time. And I was an educator as a regular job, but the spiritual drive was still very strong. What were you teaching? I'm just curious. What I taught you... different things, elementary school and special ed. Um, the last part of my uh, uh, career was with emotionally disturbed wow. uh, boys, teenage boys, kind of like my own inner <laughs> emotionally disturbed part healing. Working out your own stuff while you're, right. while you're helping the others. Yeah, right? That's the way it works. That's yeah. what we're doing uh, here. Uh, makes sense. Practical. You know, it's, it's, right. it's efficient. Uh, so... But as we became more successful, because we were studying hypnotherapy, uh, we were doing individual sessions, Jane and I, and we were beginning to teach classes. We had a website early on, and um, we went online pretty quickly, too. Uh, and we decided to have a nonprofit organization uh, called Awakenings Institute, a 501c. So some people get ordained through us as, as ministers of holistic healing. Uh, and it, 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 it's sort of a sense of belonging for us. It, it's a positioning for us that feels natural and authentic. And some other people who like to do that come gravitate to, to that part of what we're offering. But what we mostly do is help people now with holistic coaching and healing through courses, through trainings, through individual sessions. A lot of, we've written actually more than three books and many articles and blogs and videos. That's great. And then one of the things that you're training, it's not only for holistic spiritual coaches, healers, but you do training for light workers. So right. I think a lot of the people or may, many of the people listening to this podcast are just like, what is, what is this thing about light workers and healers? What exactly are they? And I have to say that you would, you, you know, I've been told by many people that I'm a light worker with what I'm doing. I think that you are also. So, and why do you call this an amazing time when more and more light workers and spiritual healers are awakening? So could you give us a good definition and talk about this time when so many of us are serving, awakening and serving? Yes, I I, I th I think we all know that there's a lot of crises, the meta crises, the multiple crises in race and climate, oh. in geography, and it just goes on and on. And though I think there may have been even darker times uh, living through in history. I mean, if you were in World War II, I think it could have been even more intense. But just in terms of seeing the big picture and people coming in and being able to see, hey, there's a, there's a better way, there's a higher way, and I'm feeling called. Uh, personally from my heart to do something about it. And the interesting thing, Irene, is that whatever we can do individually, and that's whatever we feel gifted to do, and it can be very small, but it could be just taking care of a, a, a person, being a, 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 a caregiver. Uh, it could be researching something, being a researcher. Uh, it could be in your art. It could be teaching. Um, it could be healing. Uh, and other possibilities. So whatever you're called to do, following that, you send out light. It's natural. It's authentic. It's empowering. It gives your passion. And it's it's sort of going with the flow as opposed to hiding your light and bearing yourself in a slow death. So that gives you, that's usually what's associated, we understand, with that idea of light workers. And if the more people who do that even with a small number, uh, can create a big difference because of the power of that light. So that that keeps me going. And that's what I help other people do and get clear because there's stuff in the ways. There's fears, doubts, which then turns into body problems and social problems and, and the like. And you can you can work through that and often miraculously so with some help and the right. Well, that's things. for me, the whole premise is if you're here to help clear your stuff, healing yeah. your stuff, that makes you better able to help people. Right. And right. you don't have to wait to clear everything because that's not practical, but just start where you are. Right. Wherever you can. Right. And you have you have guidance for identifying and living a person's soul's calling, which you call the life purpose formula. Could you tell yes. us about that? Yeah. It's something I came across as sort of a synthesis that every once in a while, if you're in this I mean, I think we all have these enlightened, illuminated moments. And this one came kind of piecing things together because people talk about life purpose pretty regularly now. When when we wrote 
our earlier book called in 2000, Getting Through to Your Soul, uh, The Four Keys to Living Your, we called it Your Divine Purpose. That was a subtitle. That was pretty unusual, uh, the idea of life purpose. Although traditionally, if you go back to Dharma and ancient religions and so forth, wisdom traditions, it's there. Uh, but now it's pretty commonplace life purpose. And this is a really simple, almost formula, although your life purpose really isn't a formula, but nonetheless, it seems to hold over the years. And, and it goes like this, Irene, uh, what are your gifts and talents that you're passionate about? Not just the things you're good at, but the things you really like to do. For me, I like to do coaching and healing and teaching. That's part one. The other part is how would you like to see the world improve? How would you like the world to be better or to make the world a better place? Now, that sounds very obscure and global and <laughs> uh, diaphanous or just how do you do that? And the interesting thing is, well, let me ask you, just to, just to ground it for a moment, how would you like to see the world become a better place? What would be your just short answer? I, my, when they pulled me out of the car, the voice that came into my head said to me, be loving and kind to everyone yeah. as I was laid on the side of the road. And Perfect. I realized that that meant not, not only to everyone, but it also meant for me. So what right. I would like to see and my passion is for people to treat, to, to heal as much as they can, to be able to treat each other with love and kindness and treat themselves with love and kindness, which I think would it would make the world a much better place if right. we all were like that to each other. Therefore, this podcast dedicated to inspiring people to heal. Yes. So you virtually in, in, in translated that life purpose formula. Uh, you know, for me, I would say uh, I I love doing coaching and healing uh, and teaching uh, to make the world. I would say a more uh, creative and prosperous and peaceful place. You would, you might say, I love to do podcasting, maybe some other things to make the world a, a love, more loving and kind place. Would that be right? Well, I would say I love to learn, and I love meeting Philip Montrose today. That because I'm, I'm learning and I'm transmitting your wisdom to other people. So that's what I really love to yeah, do. And transmit and make. I love transmitting wisdom and sh and sharing and collaborating with with people with the the people that I I'm attracted to for this and to make the world a more loving and kind place. So those are some rough things, e even though that's just a rough starting place. I, I think it's a pretty powerful, accurate starting place, don't you? I do too. I do too. Your gifts and, and talents yeah. uh, to make the world a better place. Now, someone would ask, I think, so does that mean before I come into this lifetime, I know what my purpose is going to be? Am I programmed for that with things I'm going to experience? Well, my understanding uh, is that more or less, yes, but not in a in a in a very tight scripted way. So it's it's like saying I'm on a journey from place A to B, and I want to take in these sites. You know, I want to if I'm going from New York to San Francisco, I want to make sure I see this part. You know, in in the middle of the country in this part in the West and so go see the Grand Canyon or whatever. Now, if you don't get to that, it's not like you're not going to have your purpose. It may be deviated. You might even get to a different city, but you have some ideas and you have people and connections you want to make along the way. So it's, it's kind of a rough draft blueprint. That's not set in stone. Okay. Okay. But, but it's, it's sort of a, it's a light you're, it, it, it's a, it's sort of a trailer or, or a way that you're, that you feel attracted to that feels right, right. for you. Right. Right. And I, right. And I know that also that you and Jane have a holistic EFT and a spiritual yes. kinesiology healing process. Uh, and I, you call it the apex healing or reframing and anchoring. Could you please explain right. that to all of us? Yeah. So, so a, a backdrop to that is going back to when I was, when I was in the spiritual organization with Jane, the Gurdjieff Espensky group years ago, the people were very uh, repressive with their emotions. They, there was a idea of not expressing negative emotions. And I think it was sort of misunderstood. So you repress them. So people were very volcanic and inhibited. So that's got us on this journey after yeah. I left that program to find out healing modalities, starting with holistic hypnotherapy. And uh, that led us into uh, EFT, the emotional freedom techniques, the tapping technique, right. which millions right. of people know now. And we have a little holistic version of it, which I'm about to show you. And also healing from the soul, 
There are different ways you can use your soul's energy and direct it for healing, which is very powerful. And those can complement each other. So you yes. need that. Otherwise, you're just going to be uh, sort of the out of control spiritual person who's not very grounded what we call the spiritual earthly uh, polarity where you're in balance, you're sort of always head in the sky and, you know, you're tripping over yourself or you're in financial it, or health issues and so forth, even though you have this wonderful spiritual awareness. So when you want to ground that by clearing those, those issues. And that makes sense. And when you talk about healing with the help of your soul. So I imagine you train people or teach people how right. to access their soul's wisdom exactly. and how they can connect with that. And so let that leads me to your new book, The Loving Power of Your Soul, a guidebook for realizing your true potential, because it addresses questions like, who yeah. are you and why are you here? How can you reliably access your inner truth, which we're talking about soul wisdom, to guide you on your journey? And how can we clear roadblocks and move forward on this soul's journey of ours with greater ease? So what would you like every, would you just talk about your book and what would you like everyone to know about it so that they run to the bookstores or run to Amazon and, and get your book. I have a copy of it right in the back. <laughs> <laughs> what do you know? Loving power of yourself. Uh, yeah, we're, we're very proud of that book, our most recent book. But I want to go back to kind of complete the loop here about okay. the holistic EFT and the spiritual kinesiology healing. Because I do want to give examples or demonstrate that Please briefly do. so people say, oh, what is this and how it works? Because it's, it's pretty extraordinary. And the basics are, are pretty easy to get a, a sense of it. Um, so the loving power of your soul, the, the impetus for that book, Irene, was different ways to connect tangibly with your soul. Some people think it's a very obscure, you know, how do you do that? Can you do that? What is your soul? How would I know it's there? How has it influenced me? And it's sort of running in the background consciously. And as you wake up, you are connected with it. You're co-creating with it. And we mentioned, we share six different ways in the uh, Loving Power of Your Soul book about how to do that. And once you connect with that, then you can use that for healing. So uh, to give you an example, if you want to um, say something bothers you, maybe it's something very small or big. It could be you're you're upset about someone cut you off in traffic, say, and that made you irritated and frustrated. Uh, well, you can go to your soul, as I'm about to, to show you, and use that energy and view that irritation and it could be a big irritation it could be a grief or a loss as we'll talk about like a really serious one seeing it from the eyes and the lens of your soul so there's going to be a lot of compassion and love there and courage summoned up and insights and resources that's fascinating that's wonderful yeah i think the soul also probably would tell you let it go right <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, in, in more or less. And it, it, just to give you a story, I remember one lady I was helping doing the spiritual kinesiology, the healing from her soul. And the issue was uh, her brother, she's this, this woman, I think is in her 50s, and her brother would belittle her and or just not listen to her if he'd come with to her and sort of, you know, made people like this sort of complaining to her. And if she would try to offer any kind of support or suggestion, he would be very dismissive and kind of condescending to her, you know, sort of, you know, damned if you do, damned if you don't. So going to her soul, doing the process we're about to do, feeling that higher, lofty, soulful, unified, loving connection, feeling that, seeing that, getting an image, she got an image, which we can do uh, for that situation. And it was a dove in her heart. Isn't that beautiful? A dove in her heart. Beautiful. So she sent that dove in her heart back to her earthly situation of dealing with her brother, just imagining that energy. And it completely shifted her. So the next time she was with her brother, she wasn't reactive anymore because she could feel that dove and that love in her heart. That's beautiful. But you can't just say, you know, be more loving to your brother. You know, it can't just be in the kind of out of control or the advice giver. Do this, do that. You know, you, you, that doesn't Which work. Which is what most people tend to do. Which actually usually has the opposite reaction, you know, either, yeah, sure, or, you know, who are you to tell me what to do? No, nope, people don't like you to tell them how to live their lives. <laughs> None of us do. But we right. like support, loving support, especially uh, by, from the right person. Yeah, that's, that's true. So if they read your book, they can actually get some clues in into how to contact their soul yeah. uh, if well, they have questions or Yeah, uh, and let, why don't we do a, an example? Why don't we do a, an experience? Sure. Yeah, to show people what we're talking about. Here's one of the ones which... Uh, it's going to a higher place in your mind where you can sense or see it. 
Mm -hmm. And if you have something you want to address, even in yourself, just something you want to have a little healing, you can take whatever you want and send it to it too. If you do you have something you'd like to. Are you talking for, for me? Yeah. Do you have okay. anything you want to send it to just to, cause I will, and I'll have the listeners, the viewers, if they want to send it to something and it could be something small, just to start off with this demonstration, not like I've been in therapy 30 years and I'm going to, you know. How about frustration with with uh, getting something done where I live? In a oh, group perfect. Yeah. Okay. perfect. Yeah. Okay. So I'm in a group of people. We're trying to do something and we're getting a lot of resistance from some powers that be in, yeah. in so the situation. That's, yeah, exactly. That would be a good example. And the, and the viewer can just find their little uh, pet peeve or irritation for now. And so that's we set that aside. It's easy to connect to, right? <laughs> So, but we breathe in, we relax, and you just, as you're breathing and relaxing, you imagine rising up to a beautiful mountaintop or a high lofty place. And in that wonderful place, you get a 360 degree sense of everything around you. And the air is perfect. The temperature is wonderful. And you have that connected with everything and everyone. And you know, you're have that expansive feeling and view where you can, your soul is empowering you. And from that wonderfully empowered lofty place, you can get an image or a message or a word, something that will help you empower you or heal you if you want to do that. So as you get that word or message or that image, okay. that feeling, just send that to the part of you that was struggling, sort of down in the mud, we call it, you send it way back down wherever you were and just give them that wonderful color or light or image or message, okay? And then just notice the shift and just know that you can come to this wonderful soulful mountaintop or lofty place whenever you want, breathing in the pure, clear energy as a resource and different perspective for love and healing and light. And whenever you're ready, you can open your eyes if your eyes were closed, if you were in a place to do that feeling grounded and alert and using that energy in any way you choose. Oh, that's beautiful. Thank you very much, Philip. That's really helpful. Did you send it to your uh, yes, I did. frustrated yes, self? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. So did we... you notice anything? I felt lighter. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So that's part of it. So you can see if you do this regularly, I mean, this was just a very little quick example that shifts your, your more soul centered, your more heart centered and your, your, your life is, is, being done from that perspective rather than an autopilot and all the buried traumas and struggles from this lifetime and before kind of takes you above the drama yes take that's which is what Transcend. what i felt it, it transcended the drama so the other thing i want to ask you is everyone talks about mindfulness and meditation um right. but you talk about that there's a bright and a dark side of mindfulness and meditation and that they relate to soulfulness so can you please explain that to everyone what that is about. right so you want to bring the soul heaven sometimes called in the earth to ground it like we just did from the we call that mud to mountain topper at the apex visualization there going to that high place uh and mindfulness is just being present and attentive with whatever you're doing and it could be in a meditative state or it could be doing some exercise yoga or qigong or whatever it could just taking a walk or being with nature right mm -hmm. and actually just anytime being mindful you could be standing in line at the grocery store and you can be very mindful uh, but when you're doing sort of more meditative traditional mindfulness states that way the challenge of that to be aware of is that it's not an escapist uh experience where I'm really stressful, so I'm going to go into my mindfulness cave so I can escape and not deal with things. So that's something, one thing to be aware of. Another thing, which is maybe even more subtle, because people say, I don't know how to connect with my soul. I'm going to go into a meditative state. Um, and so you're in a meditative state and your soul gives you this wonderful message and you say, I'm I'm ignoring those thoughts. You know, I just want to be have a clear mind and your soul saying, wait a second, this is, you know, this is a soulful message for you. So that could be, and we've sort of seen that. And, and we've seen people who meditated for long times just do really crazy things and self-destructive things, and they've been meditators. Really? For long times, one lady I was helping with, um, and she felt uh, betrayed by her, what used to be her best friend, uh, who she went into a spiritual business with, and the friend actually stole the money from the business. Oh, and my. Really betrayed her. And this was seven years ago, and she meditated every day, uh, but- it was still there as if it had happened yesterday. And so when we did a process a little bit like what we did in connecting with her soul, she was able to immediately see it from a higher perspective. 
release the hurt and forgive her friend and move on with her life. How did she see for that from a higher perspective? How did that appear to her? Because she, she's hurt. Right. Her friend well, really betrayed I, I, her. I don't remember what her, she, we did another soul centering, which we talked about in loving power of your, of your heart, of your soul book, where you're just breathing into your heart and you're feeling the soul connection get stronger and stronger. And as you're breathing in your heart, you're feeling opening above your head and you're bringing this higher light where you feel like you're connected with everything and everyone with the perfect love and healing for you. And when you connect with that and you're in an altered higher state and you bring that into the situation like we just did, in this case, a very profound challenge with her former friend, it just shifted everything in the moment, completely uh, reconfigured her life from that perspective. That's so interesting. So it was no longer, she was just was not taking it as personally anymore. It just was completely different. It was like it happened to another person. And that's mm -hmm. the way it is. It almost should be like, wow, you know, if someone else say, like we heard from her, we'd say, wow, that's really terrible, you know, have a lot of compassion for them. But we wouldn't go around all the time saying, well, I'm really bothered because something happened to that person seven years ago. And we would just say, you know, we wish them well. Well, that's, we sh that, that's our own hurts, <laughs> our own betrayals, our own losses are the same way that we need to get that third person perspective, what we're here to learn and heal from our soul's perspective. Which is leading me to my next question. How does the soul's perspective and connecting with our soul ex empower us and accelerate our growth on this side as we move through this lifetime. Right. So as that becomes more a way of life, you start to see life through your soul's eyes. Like, how does this make sense spiritually? So when something comes up, that's quote, a problem, like, oh no, you know, something happened, you know, with my website, I'm bothered. I'm thinking of a personal example now. <laughs> Uh, you know, which probably applies to everyone to listening to this podcast. <laughs> and I used to react. I used to be very reactive, like, oh, no, like the sky is falling, you know, like, you know, and then you could have some, if you have a website, you could have some serious problems that are mm -hmm. disturbing, you know, uh, if your website is hacked or something really, but you, but you nonetheless, you need to go through that knowing it's temporary. And now I know it's temporary. I still might have a, mo a short reaction. Uh, annoyance, large annoyance. <laughs> yeah. And some of that is just healthy survival coping like I hey I, this is a this is an emergency or or how big of an emergency really is it you know am I overreacting so you're more tempered you're more moderate you're more realizing in the perspective and when things happen you you recover quickly okay I'm really angry uh that really annoys me that person let me down whatever it is but you don't hold it you don't hold the grudges you don't keep the accounts like do you know five years ago what you did to me mm. you know that you don't do that anymore you just yeah move on quickly because you're coming just, more from a soulful place which leads me to asking you tell everyone because now they're fascinated by what we're talking about tell us about your private practice your workshops your certification courses your training for whatever you'd like people to know about what yeah. you do and how you help them through the institute right well I, i'm going to tell the people in a way that i think it's not just talking about me and what i'm offering in a way that is going to be engaging to people as they're listening mm -hmm maybe pretty closely this because I'm going to actually demonstrate what we right. teach and in, in do an individual uh, sessions so you can get a flavor for that. So part of it is doing what we did, the spiritual kinesiology, the healing from the soul, how to do that, how to become really good at that in the trainings or in an individual session to receive that where people can have these life-changing shifts and get clear and become more of the light worker they want to be or already are, but just enhancing that. Uh, so that's part of it, along with coaching, how to be a spiritual holistic coach. Uh, and the other tools, uh, and we do some more holistic EFT tapping, tapping that works very well with right. reframing and anchoring mm -hmm. and also integrating the head, tapping on the top of the head, the left and right brain, and tapping into the heart. Some of the aff the affirmations we downloaded, one that they like is called anything is possible and miracles are happening now and I downloaded that anything is possible person can do that if they're watching this tapping the left and right brain breathing and tapping into the heart and miracles are happening now that's one of them so you can do that with the holistic EFT tapping that's the spiritual coaching and now in more recent years Jane and I my partner Jane Mountrose and I at Awakenings Institute we're now teaching and helping people with spiritual guidance uh, program. And we've incorporated a lot of oracles, both tarot and oracle decks and uh, channeling into that. And I can demonstrate that. Please now. do. This is yeah. a perfect time. Yeah. So 
let's let's do a two parter here. So there are a lot of Oracle decks, and Oracle started centuries ago. There's sort of an obscure beginning with the tarot and the uh, the archetypal images in it. And then there there's people who have these very creative decks. There's hundreds of Oracle decks. And I'm going to draw from one called Earth Magic by Stephen Farmer. Uh, and I thought we could do it on the topic of your show, Grief and Rebirth, right? Okay, sure. So we'll do a reading on Grief and Rebirth because you need a focus for the cards. And this is a way of developing your intuition. And here's a news flash, uh, maybe. Uh, you want to grow. You want to grow spiritually, probably everyone listening to this, even though some people may be slow to come to this. Some people may have done it as a child, wherever you are. So to get there from here, you can't just use your analytical mind, the CNN reality, the left brain. You need that. It's a core. And, but because it's not approved by family, society, the mainstream, that doesn't mean it's not there. In fact, the higher dimensions are beyond that, and you need to your intuition to access it. So the oracles are going to access things that are intuitively true for you, and people will individually context it, and it will develop your intuition. You use your intuition, and you develop it. That is critical. He talked about lightworkers, and we all have that. Me too. But you need to develop that. This is an incredible way to do it. And I'm going to show that. Have, have you worked much or I don't know if people come on here very much with the oracles and stuff? I mean, I'm... people will reference it, but they don't actually work with it as you're doing. So yeah. am I supposed to, how, I'm how going, are we going to uh, choose cards? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to choose the card for us. Okay. And I'm going to ask you about it in the okay. awakening and people watching this. So it seems very strange, and it's always strange to me, like how this can work, but uh, it works on a higher level, an intuitive level. So I'm just going to pick a card, and the focus again is how, what can we learn about um, grief, grief and rebirth, and rebirth. right? I guess. Mm -hmm. And so here's the card, and I'm going to have to turn it my way to read what it is, and then I'll read the, what the guidebook says, and, and we'll intuit it. Oh, hmm, wolf instinct. My original name was wolf. My oh, wife. isn't that interesting? Yeah. So it's picking up that yeah, picking up that. And and instinct, interesting instinct, there's a wolf here. And that's the card. And I'll read it. Uh, maybe I'll just read it. And there's a very short uh, definition of uh, it in the guidebook. Just And then I'm going to ask you what you're... And the wolf is a spiritual animal, isn't it? Uh, yeah, well, it can be. It's going to be whatever it is for you. And, and are you beginning to pick up things? Are you beginning to notice something about uh, responding to that? I um, in, in a subliminal way, yeah. Okay, it's coming. Uh, uh, yeah. Stay with me because it's coming. Uh, and here's a description. The wolf, some of the strongest characteristics of our brother and sister wolves are loyalty, mm -hmm. companionship, playfulness, and affection. Loyalty, you companionship, just described playfulness, me. and affection. <laughs> They're exceptional parents too, mm -hmm. wolves. Mm -hmm. uh, and the message from the card, according to the death, is you have lost touch with your instinctual sensibilities. It's the result of cultural, this is just what we were saying, and or religious prescriptions dictating that anything wild and instinctual is threatening and therefore has to be controlled or eliminated. Now is the time to overcome this limited minded mindset and tune into your instinctual cues. I'm going to use the word intuitive instead of instinctual that's the way it's reading to me. Let the spirit of the wolf be your teacher and call upon this benevolent being for help identify what these cues are saying. You just you just did the whole um, mission of the podcast. That's amazing. Isn't it? Wish it for, to, for people to heal so that they can drop those, uh, the, the things that they've been brought up and the way they've been conditioned that are holding them back. Right. And the crazy thing about this, just doing this individual teaching class, I do a meditation with cards every morning. Jane and I do almost every morning. And that happens every morning, the kind of uh, synchronicities and connections. And sometimes the cards, are, I have no idea what they mean. But when I go into a meditative state, they become very clear. I, I remember one I, the, was the fog. You know, why do am I getting the fog? And like going through the fog and the other card was celebration. If you go through the fog, you can start to see what to celebrate if you can get clear and grounded. Uh, That's so. There are all these amazing intuitive connections. And I thought I would go further and do another card to show you another aspect of this. But do you have any, are you picking up anything else? Anything you you gave me? Well, a the diamond. wolf is very um, strong and yes. standing in his power. And that's the first thing that, or her power. And oh, that's yes. the first thing that came through to me because part of my growth has been at this time of my life, after healing a lot of, ways my power was diminished i am now standing and 
transmitting in my power mm -hmm. as to uh, how I've healed and, and where I've come and mm -hmm. trying and to help people. Mountaintop, we went mm -hmm. just recently for a soulful visit at our mountaintop, our lofty place too there. And yeah, there is a lot of strength and, and clarity and determination, but love like, like dogs, canines, the loyalty. Absolutely. Very much yeah. so. That's great. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to add in one more thing. Uh, if we're not, if I'm not, are we going at about the right pace or is this is too fine. much too You're quickly? fine because okay. we have a, just a few more um, okay. questions. This I want to do a, a quick channeling because I can also, something I've done for many years, I'm starting to do it more publicly, channeling beings. I'm kind of a polyglot channel and for whatever reason I can pick up on these beings when I focus on it and the card and image it makes it, yeah, I don't have That's to. That's wonderful. Here's another deck by uh, Kyle Grayson. Really, I really like the pictures and artwork keepers of the light and there's the masters and angels in these cards so i'm going to randomly pick one and then channel one about again the topic of uh, loss and rebirth right right so i'm going to get it from another perspective which is the kind of things that we teach and help people with an individual set so i'm just randomly picking one of the in this case one of the masters or angels i don't know which one and let's see what comes up oh yeah el moria el moria he's one of the and just for people, if they don't know what an enlightened uh, ascended master is, these are different from angels. These are people, usually beings who've incarnated on this earth, sometimes other, L and they had a certain level of mastery. So they're communicating with us on the other plane. And sometimes people do channel them or Alice Bailey wrote about them in the uh, theosophy in 1900s books, and they've shown up in different places, but you can connect with them and they have sort of spiritual areas of resources on higher dimensions. And the little tagline is for El Moria is awakening presence. And there's a, the universe is with you, wear a cloak of protection and love. Hmm. Okay. Beautiful card, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's almost like you can look into the cards and they're, they're looking back at you, these, yes. these particular drawings. Yes. So now we got the wolf, we have El Moria and I'm going to channel El Moria. Okay. And see what he has to say. I have no idea what is coming out except just what I'm picking up. Yes, bereavement and loss is part of life. In order to gain life, you must lose life. It is part of the journey and the cycle of creation. Uh, you have actually come into being this time because you have gone out of being, i.e. death, and gone into another dimension. So things are coming in and out of existence all the time. And when you begin to realize that's part of the way reality works, it is not as disturbing to you, although it is a change and it can be a, abrupt and unexpected, uh, so you need to adapt to it. But with much love comes much healing and much awareness. And if you go through life knowing that you are on a spiritual mission, even the greatest losses will serve a purpose for you to create more love, more healing, more beauty and connection for you and everyone. Much love, El Moria. That's beautiful. And so right on. Thank you so much, Philip. El Moria and the wolf. And the wolf. That's so great. Thank you so much. Have you, um, I want, I have two questions as a result of it. That's marvelous. Thank you. And right on. Um, if people want to learn better how to meditate, do you teach people how to do that also? If they're having a problem with um, too many thoughts in their mind, or I'm really not going anywhere, or how do I do that? Do you do that? Well, uh, I I would say a couple of things we would help show them how to get balance. It may even just be continuous EFT tapping, doing different energy balancing techniques like I'm doing, connecting more with their soul. It would be another way of calming their mind because what's agitating in your mind, well, part of it can be your diet and lifestyle or not getting enough sleep and so forth. But otherwise, is these blockages, these hidden things from this lifetime or other lifetimes, things where you were out of sort, you didn't feel supported, you felt criticized, you felt unloved, etc. All those things are agitating and they're, they're often buried, they're hidden, like, what do I do with them? And the whole idea is once you get more onto this awakening path, they become, oh, you know, great, this is what I need to work on. Hey, I'm feeling really awkward, you know. Irene, I'm just saying, Irene said something, I'm feeling hurt, I'm feeling critical, I'm feeling, well, there's something off in me. I drew an oracle card, and it's throwing me off, it's it's stone people, you know, It's I, I that card makes me feel funny. Well, what's making you feel funny? Something in you is triggered by something out there, and when you have these tools, you're incredibly empowered, like, yeah, now I know what to do. It's not like, I can't meditate, I can't become. Well, it's because 
this particular, and that's a doorway, that's an avenue to start the healing. That's marvelous. And do you have any offers today for our podcast audience? Yeah, there's a Bella? couple. Well, uh, we maybe a place to begin is a free uh, uh, part of our newest book, which is part of our course. We haven't published it. It's called Awakening to Your Magnificence. It's about the next new frontier in humanity, which we've been talking about. And there's an excerpt, a free excerpt and a video that comes with that. And people could get that free uh, uh, Awakening to Your Magnificence and video at tinyurl.com slash guide dash intro, tinyurl.com slash guide dash intro. And, and then we will be, provide a link to that yeah, also. And then they'll be on our, our new newsletter. They'll get our up fresh videos and articles and what we're offering and when the next programs are and so forth. That's great. And uh, you of all people, what is your message about the importance of healing? And please explain why you say that by following your soul, things work out better than expected. Right. Well, they keep doing that. You know, what seems like a, a problem becomes actually a gift and surprise, you know, a hidden gift. You know, it's something that, well, if this is showing up in my life, I guess that's what I needed to learn about. That's what I needed to embrace. So whatever is showing up, there's there's can be a hidden benefit or jewel. Not that it's something you necessarily want. But it's like that card I told you earlier, if it's if it's fog, which is confusion, you have a fog card going back to an oracle image. Well, I need to go through the fog. How do I go through the fog? Well, I, I ground myself. I need to be kind of cautious because it's foggy. It's murky. I can't see anything. I'm confused, Philip. What's your next step? Well, you're breathing. You're maybe doing some EFT tapping. You're like, what's it showing you? Oh, wow. You know, I'm feeling pretty grounded. Hey, I was able to get through the fog. I feel pretty good about myself. That's Fabulous. And what is Philip's personal tip for finding joy in life? I think uh, just connect with your heart and soul, breathe into that and see what your next step is. What's life presenting me? Follow that next step and get support if you need it, which we all need support. Right, right. <laughs> get the right, right. support. <laughs> That's so great. Philip, you know, in closing, I want to share this enlightened quote from your book, The Loving Power of Your Soul a guidebook for realizing your true potential with our Grief and Rebirth podcast audience. When we begin to embrace the truth of who we are, magnificent spiritual beings who are having a physical experience, everything shifts. Our challenges can become opportunities for growth. As we search enthusiastically for the deeper significance in the events of our lives, we develop spiritual intelligence. We open to our true roles as creators who are here with a meaningful plan and life takes on new meaning. From this soulful perspective, we realize more profoundly that life is a spiritual journey and our experiences are guiding us to realize our full potential. Your admirable mission to help create a world where love is the guiding force and each person's unique gifts are honored and nurtured is deeply in sync with the mission of Grief and Rebirth podcast, which is to educate, enlighten, and provide healing choices so that we can end suffering, transform lives, and change the world. Philip, thank you from my heart for this remarkable interview filled with so many enlightened healing insights, including that wonderful channeling. Thank you so much. And here is a loving reminder, everyone that you can see the show notes and all Grief and Rebirth podcast episodes on irenweinberg.com. And make sure to follow us and like us on social at, at Irene S. Weinberg on Instagram, Facebook, and wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube, as I like to say, to be continued. Thank you so much, Philip. Many blessings. Great being with you, Irene, and everyone. Thank you. And bye for now. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.